This is still September 22nd, 2023. Today, in that last tape, you can hear women in the background. You can also eventually hear them cackling and listen through the car speakers. Well, you know, you can, if they erase my voice off, you can actually hear them cackle. Will's going to say he taped her before, or he did it to her before, so they'll get away with it. And they're taunting me as I'm making my tape and cackling me. Got him. Hmm. I was up in Akron today working. And some guy off in the distance said we all know her family spoke highly of her. Hmm? They had to have drugged her and told her to say it before. Hmm? It's like, where you been? They've been admitting that for years. Where I had all the bruises for it called the FBI. Hmm? Throwing up, heart racing, almost passing out, severe personal infection seen by Altman family physicians all summer long. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't even know where all these marks come from. Do you know how bad I hurt? I had giant bruises all over me. Did you fall? No. And I hurt so bad. I was being drugged, beat, and raped. And somebody off in the distance said they had to have a roof eater. You're sleepwalking with roofies for four to six hours. I give you the example of what happened to Dar, what happened to Mike, and how I'd lose hours, how I'd take... I come in from working outside to get, make something to eat, wash my hands, make something to eat and drink, go in and use the bathroom, wash my hands better, sit down, take a drink, and then I get dizzy and some hours would pass. Or I'd wake up with marks on me. I kept thinking, if that idiot's beating on me, why am I not waking up? And here they're, it's called needling someone. It's plenty of the day rape drugs in uh, an injection. They do it in uh, bigger cities and nightclubs. See, that's the whole thing is I called the FBI on our recorded live and that agent committed heinous crimes. Told you the where he had showed up at that church the night before. And he told on me. He uh Dave told Danny he talked to him. Officers in uniform verified it was the agent that called me back, telling on me. November six, twenty two at Trinity Gospel was verified by officers. It was an agent that called me back and telling on me in that church before I called him back. And when I called him the next day, I told him, I said, someone's already told on me, you liar. You know what the name of the church? Mm-mm, because it was him. Told him about the guy that threatened to knife me at Giant Eagle, called me a liar. You don't say you're lying. You, do you know if there's a camera above the bench? I don't know. You don't know if there's a camera above the bench. I'll rush you. Now you say you're lying or I'll put you in jail. And I'm like, what? And I said, well, you tried to kidnap me before. You liar. Terry let me tape her with her permission. She's seen him. He took Marlisa's niece and he killed Lauren's family member. He's part, He's a kidnapper for the human traffickers. You either, and the authorities know what he looks like. And I'm describing a serial killer. And he's calling me a liar. You either say you're lying or arrest you. I said, what? He said, now, was there a camera above that bench or not? I don't know. You either say you're lying. Or I'll put you in jail. It's like, fine, whatever. Bullies me into more false statements. Starts cackling at me. On a recorded line. I, um, why would the FBI help you? A person like you. Well, they're going to try to kill me. So. They're going to, uh, they've tried to kill me. So. Like, murder's not good enough for the FBI. Hmm? But they care about the Amish men's spirits. But they don't care the apostolics kill people. I, he's like, give me a real reason. Some guy yells, some other agent yells out, well, we could use Pete's tape of weird with yourself. And I'm like, what? What is he talking about? He starts giggling, stops, you don't know. I don't even know who Pete is. The only Pete I know is my brother in Medina. I didn't know about the hired hitman that had been drug and beat raped me all summer. Hmm? And was framing me, was hired as a hitman. 
Dave told Annie he hired Pete on his own, his girlfriend's dad, and his the drug cartel hmm? to frame me. Okay? A hired hitman. They're laughing at me. Stop. She don't know. Okay? He said, uh, uh, I didn't even know who Pete was for till 9-18-19. His picture was on the wall. Little old white Santa Claus. I've been following me around. I didn't know who he was. And he was joking around with Judge Timothy Ludic. And I said, Peter or something. I didn't even know who he was. Till a year later. He said, uh, give me a real reason. And then y'all had something about Pete before. And I, the guy's giggling. Stop. She don't know. It's some kind of repeat confession. I've never talked to him. Still never. Okay. He said, um. He's giggling, stop, she don't know, give me a real reason. And I told him about my brother-in-law, Craig, that worked at the Pentagon under Dick Cheney. Um, and he said, well, I can move you out and I'll just leave you somewhere. He said, I don't come with any money. I said, I don't have any money saved up, I'll be homeless. I can't do that. He said, well, if you agree to get uh, information on Dave and the churches, I can, I'll can. list you an informant. I said, I can do that. He said, I'm opening an account today. <laughs> Ooh, sorry. With 5000 a month, he said, and um, uh, 5000 a month, and um, you'll have that money to live on uh, for working this case from now on, and I'll make sure no man touches you, I'll pull you out if it gets too bad, and then the life of peace is an informant, nothing legally stated, dated against you again, and only for you, and only for you will we do this for, we'll always put it back to the traffic ticket, even when you tell, Okay. And you can't be legally charged again for work in this case. And you'll have that money to live on. Then he flip flop and threatened me if I told. Um, <clears throat> with his acknowledgement of Pete, Dave told Danny hire Pete on his own. The night before at Apostolic Church of Barberton, uh, when we went in there, Paul Pamer got in Dave's face. My God, I had an FBI agent in my office. He's right there. I walk off um, and he's, Pamer's still yelling at Dave, how dare you bring the FBI up here with threats on her life? Women walk up, he knows she's being drugged, beaten, raped, and he said he didn't care. Um, and, uh, I had bruises all over me, been throwing up in a severe mm -hmm. personal infection, lost 18 pounds. And my heart sank down in my stomach, is that what's going on? I go in and sit down, they come in and say it again, said if she was going to be faking to you, I see it, and faking to you, well, while that family was grieving, he didn't care what they did to her, uh, and he was going to turn them back over to him. can you imagine an agent saying that, Dave comes in, let's go, get out in the truck, he said, I ought to kill you myself, and he's swinging at me in the truck till I almost jumped on the highway, and I got home, I ran from him, that's when the next day I called him back. With his acknowledgement of saying that to that church, he had been in contact with Strange. David already told Pamela, my wife really was sick before, and we got proof of it. He said, good to know. He told him months before that. So who made that up? Strange made it up in 2003. See, I had had fibromyalgia. Um, <clears throat> I can go over it real quick. I was really sick. One day I was fine. I doubled over screaming. Dave rushed me to the hospital. They did emergency apodectomy. Said it didn't look bad, but the way she screamed, and I couldn't risk it being bad. So they took it out. I got a big scar on my stomach. Two months later, I'm screaming in the same spot. I go in. They said, did you ever get checked for cyst? And I'm like, cyst? They checked. I had endometriosis, fluid-filled cyst growing inside me and exploding. That will double you over they tried burning treatment medication caused kidney stones i'm getting knocked out getting uh stents put in and out of my kidneys um trying to keep the kid the kidney tubes open <clears throat> they're exploding so bad i'm inside my stomach they're going through my belly button around my belly button i'm bleeding into my stomach okay um it got so bad my uterus flipped over and when I have my monthly, I bleed out onto the ground. So they did a lower hysterectomy. Two months later, I'm screaming again. I have a cyst as big as a golf ball. They said that it explodes, you're dead. So they cut me side to side and took it out. A month and a half later, I have pancreatitis. They're looking for the cause. And from all those surgeries and meds, um, my gallbladder quit working. Um, and so they had to take my gallbladder out. And then I was on the M-signs for a while. Then I had a ball of scar tissue form and they had to take it out. 
well I finally got well and one day I uh started bleeding and I went into the hospital and the kid one of the kidney stones had kinked the kidney too and it was ble pushing back up into the kidney and making me the kidney bleed I have a four inch scar on my back where they cut through my back and then take out the damaged part and resew it back together Fibromyalgia is sort of like having a stroke, but you have it in your nervous system. All your muscles lock up from being hurt. I'm caught top to bottom of my stomach, now my back. Two and a half years, all those surgeries. Okay? Where when you have a stroke, your hand will lock up, and then they have to pry it open, pry it open, pry it open, give you a ball to squeeze, and then reteach you to use your hand and arm. Well, fibromyalgia, your muscles lock up tight and they won't relax. And then with the not enough blood flow because they're locked up, it spreads into the other muscles. And it's a pain syndrome caused by being hurt. It goes into spontaneous remission usually within two years of being hurt. I would have done better if I would have just stayed in bed. But stupid me, I went to uh, pain management. Don't ever go to them. They're witch doctors. Physical therapy, chiropractors, massage therapy, fine. But the other ones are witch doctors. I went up there. They gave me 30 shots of steroids up, up and down my back and neck. That's too much. I gained 150 pounds in eight months. They started me on alternative medicines and my feet started swelling. I'm like, is it the medication? No, it's a medication error. No, it wasn't. It's allergic reaction. I swelled up into my knees. My knees went into my legs and into my knees. My knees doubled in size and they would pop out of place. The orthopedic doctors would give me braces to hold my knees in place and pull out turkey-based syringes of fluid out. Put steroids in it. Gave me canes to support myself. Okay. My feet are seven, seven and a half shoes. and went up to eight and a half wide, almost nine. And they were that thick. It went up into my waist. My heart started getting off. Uh, I was in the cardiac ward on calcium blockers and nitro pills. My thyroid stopped working. My adrenal gland stopped working. And my pituitary gland and my brain started swelling against my eyes. I could hardly see. I'm dying from medical malpractice. Um... I, my stomach started bleeding from all the medication. I went into one of their associates and said, well, I usually, when I scope on the stomach, I usually put a, I do go ahead and do a colostomy, do, I end up with a colostomy bag. I don't want a bag on my side. They were talking about doing brain surgery. They told me that I had, um, <clears throat> brain tumors. I didn't have brain tumors. I had brain swelling and, um, they, uh, wanted to do brain surgery i went to my regular doctor i'm like what do you think about all this she said for one thing we're going to have a long talk you have something what we call the golden ticket insurance company and almost pays for everything she said what they're doing is they're falsely diagnosing you to rip you and your insurance company off and she put her hand out and act like she was writing a check she said and when they falsely diagnose you they write out these prescriptions that cost like $3,000 a month or $2,000. And you only pay $50 or $100. And they get a kickback from $200 to $1,000 per prescription they write from the drug companies. And then they're sharing you with your their associates and their friends. And they're ripping you off too and making you sick. So you have to keep coming back. Stop going to them. The only thing's wrong with you is your muscles locked up from having all those surgeries. Well, Joanne Young had told me about uh, Dr. Eli. She said, I know of a doctor that gets you on high doses of pain medicine and gets you out moving and you get better. So I was desperate. I go in there. He's like, he tells me the same thing. He said, I get you off that medication. You'll be surprised how fast you get well. Started me on fentanyl patches, muscle relaxers, and Vicodin's breakthrough. He said, I got to get you out enough pain to move those muscles. And as you move those muscles, blood flow will get into them. And then we can, it'll build new muscle tissue. But you got to move those muscles. And I got to get you out of enough pain to move them. First month, uh, I lost 30 pounds. I got enough feeling in my feet that I could drive my car and take my canes and braces, pull myself around back allotment stores and malls. Okay? Um, but in, into the, like the second month, I'd work so hard of trying to pull myself around. I ended up in the emergency room. Dr. Eli said, just make her comfortable. She's got to move those muscles. By the third month, it stopped happening. I could pull myself around. I still on the patches, the Vicodins and the uh, muscle relaxers. 
and um, I'm getting stronger and better every day. I would try to walk around the house. If I fell on the carpet, it wouldn't make that big a deal. If I fell on carpet, if I fell on my butt or my face, I'd pull, crawl over to uh, a couch or something, pull myself up, and go on again. My mom, I, I told you before, I feel really bad. She would sit there caring. You made it four steps. You made it ten steps. Um... <clears throat> I, and I, I was so angry that I'm a grown ass woman learning to walk. I would, anybody said anything to me, I tell them to shut up. It, it was just like, I'm trying and they knew I was trying and I would keep trying and keep trying. But when I left and I went out, I always made sure I wore the braces and I had the cane so I wouldn't fall in cement. I couldn't afford to break anything. But around the house, I kept trying and trying and I'm getting stronger and better. By May 3rd, 2023, and now I started in November of 2002 with it. By May, we're into um, seven months of it, six, seven months of working out. I am down to a 16. Brian showed up one day and said, no, my whole family is at home, said um, there was a church baseball game. Phil had took Tyler, his grandson, and there was church people behind him late for a church baseball game, and he didn't even try to stop at the stop sign and blew through into a semi. Everybody was horrified because he didn't even try to stop, and he went right into that semi and killed them both. People were horrified, and because they're called people, they can't think on their own. They would call that ministry, call them liar, call them names, and hung up on them. Okay? Uh, he said they had to wait for the bodies to get to the hospital for uh, them to call them, to tell them they have been killed. Okay, come July, I'm down to a 1460. Now people are making over me. I had went from a 24 tight down to a 1416 in nine months. I deflated like a balloon. That's why I got like three arms. Um, you know, all that extra skin from being so big. Um, they, uh, A missionary showed up. Now, I can already go up and down the steps with just my braces. I can walk outside with just the braces and waddle like a duck. And I'm practicing and employing myself around stores a lot. And it's all the time going somewhere. Okay? Um, a missionary shows up. He prays for me. And he's like, I want you to fight through the pain. I've been doing that for months. I want you to review the pain. I've been doing that for months. I want you to try to walk by faith. Well, I fall back on my butt. Left with my canes. The next day on the paper route for my kids, I'm pulling myself around the back a lot. And again, nothing happened. Just the braces this time. I'm trying to learn to get balance. The only thing by then, my feet are already down to a size 8 loose. They had already went down that far. The outside of my feet are still numb. And, um... Uh, second day, nothing happened. Third day, fourth day, on the long paper route, it happened. It went into remission, the spontaneous remission. It happens all the time. By then, because all the swelling had left, my brain swelling had went uh, had uh, went away. My um. Uh, heart was beating fine, didn't need heart medicine, didn't need thyroid medicine, didn't need adrenal gland medicine. It took me two more months before I quit falling. Um, did anything have to do with anything? No. Strange made it up four months later for, uh, Dave to cheat. Uh, I found out later that right before the case started, he was supposed to make it up to the single church women. And take him out to make fun of me. See, what also happened is Brian is, was a little 17-year-old kid. Friends with my kids. And he had went out with Strange's grandson's girlfriend. Where he had, she had showed up and she was a cheerleader. And Strange didn't like her outfit. So he made fun of her on the pulpit. He's an occult leader. Mocked a visitor. She got upset and went out with her friend Brian. Being 17, they had said. And Strange found out, and he told everybody in the church they were to shun him, they weren't to talk to him, and nobody was to acknowledge him. Well, I don't treat people like that. And I told my kids they're not allowed to treat people like that. Okay? 
Well, he's so two-faced, his own son, my brother-in-law Tim, was cheating on my sister Linda with Katie. And she was following, her, following him around. She came up to me and said, I was following him again. I think they thought it was you. Well, the next week he told everybody he thought I was fake and I was sick. And fake and I got well while that family was grieving. He made it up. So I had to sit at home and Dave could go to church by himself. It was a scam Dave and him came up. A lie, a minister that only had a high school diploma from the 1950s. That he could read and write, add and subtract and multiply and divide. He only got a minister's license because a bunch of ministers came across the parking lot, gave a couple Bible classes and signed some minister's license in the 50s. He only got that church because that guy was going to sell it and he offered him a land contract of so much proceeds of the church for 20 years and if he lost, missed one payment, he lost everything. Okay? He was a low educated minister. He's the only one that made it up. My doctors, even in front of the officers, uh, where that agent opened a real case with statements, uh, told them, you know, it was a medication error that made you sick. Uh, it's a good thing that you got off all those medicines and got on high doses of pain medicine and got out moving. Hard tell them which one made you sick. It was 20 years ago, but they should have caught it. Back in 2003, they told me to sue all those doctors for almost killing me and encouraged Dave and I for two years to sue him for medical malpractice. <clears throat> so with the, that agent's acknowledgement to that church, who did he talk to? strange see where I called the hotline the next day I couldn't wake up they had drugged me up so bad I have rivers of tears running down my face I woke up and I'm wiping them I kept saying I can't in my sleep who's that the phone's ringing let it go to voicemail wake up later this is agent da 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 call me back I can't and I fall back to sleep stagger to the bathroom try to make it to the refrigerator get something to drink get back in bed second day not much better Third day, I'm sitting on the front porch. I got, I'm holding my head. I'm like, what's wrong with me? I got hair on my face. I got to call that guy back. I'm too afraid to leave there watching me. Okay? So I start mowing the lawn. And halfway through, I think of Sarah, where Katie had been leaving threats in the mall that had been them trying to kill me. They have a permanent plan to do away with me. Call her. I already gave her information to the hotline. Uh, I call her. She's like, horse care. I'll witness for you. I'm scared for you. It's getting darker and scarier the way she talks about it. Go out and get her car. Put that agent's number in it. Hadn't even called him back yet. Make an excuse to go to the mall and go up to Apostolic Church of Barberton. And he's there. I hadn't even talked to him. And with their acknowledgement of Pete. Who's Pete? He's a hired hitman. Within the last two weeks in Walmart 62 by the front uh, uh, area. They yell out, we all know that Pete Michelle got the 25 grand hit money. And instead of killing her, they framed her and pulled all this. They were laughing at me for a hired hitman framing me, drugging me, beating and raping me on a recorded line. So when is it legal to stalk someone? The Fourth Amendment, the right of the people to be safe and secure within your own person. Nobody can touch you unless you want them to. Okay? Your places, your homes, your papers and effects against all unreasonable searches or seizures shall not be violated. Your home can't be violated. No searches, no seizures without probable cause warranted. You have to have a court order. With an oath or affirmation of the people, places and things to be searched and seized. You can't hire your girlfriend's dad and his drug friends to frame your wife. Hmm? I've talked to Officer Reinhardt Lewisville. He giggled like a little girl. He's like, <laughs> he started chuckling. He said, I don't care what they say they got. I don't care what they said they did. It's illegal. Even the FBI would go to jail for being in your home outside of protective like case with statement. That agent had agreed to protect you and have statements where they couldn't even be in your home and they can't even look or listen to it. They broke a federal constitutional law mocking me for my rapist and calling his name out. 
on a recorded lie and laughing at her rape victim. Like they said, the FBI made fun of a, her for being human trafficked. She was being drugged, beaten, raped, and didn't understand what was happening to her. My co-worker, Dar, one of her friends were sitting outside her, my class. And I said, who's that? She said, well, we're only friends, but he's worried about me. She said, I had a set of twins and one had died. Okay. He said, uh, he said, uh, she said, and I was grieving really bad over that one baby that died. My friends took me out for a night. And we got, I got a babysitter for the other twin. I took a drink out of a drink. They said I acted a little happy. Eventually, a group of people came up. They didn't know, and I was talking to them fine, and I eventually left with them. I found myself in a puddle of pee. I got myself home, and I was throwing up and really dizzy and messed up the next day. I could hardly sit up. Sound familiar? She said two months later, I found out I was pregnant. I'm like, how can I be pregnant? She said I was arguing with the doctor. I've not had sex with anyone. It's called roofing somebody. Mike, my neighbor, he came up to me about a year and a half ago. I got a problem. I don't know how I got home. I'm like, go sleep it off. He's like, you don't understand. I've been sitting there for hours. I don't know how I got home. I said, what do you remember? The second beer. And I said, go sleep it off. He's like, I got a worse problem. I got $80 in my pocket. I said, you better check your bank. He got on there and he took 100 out. He's like, but what was in the box with mustard? And how did I change my shoes? I'm like, oh my God. I'm going to sleep it off. He told me he was really sick the next day. He told me he was a New York cop and he thought I was pretty. I'm like, you really need to go sleep it off. I told him that he told me it was a New York cop. He started laughing. I've never been a New York cop. He went back to under that bar and he said in the second, um, middle of the second bar, he started telling everybody he was an astronaut, nice to some people, and told other people to F off. And he left and drove around high all night. That's how not funny funny it is i've talked to sheriff about those amnesia drugs they're like those amnesia drugs are so bad they could have drugged up the people and told them take down the towers and they did and said what they were told i've talked to other officers about them his they said you're under someone else's control for four to six hours and the drug dealers that were part of this preg they can control anybody for four to six hours they had lsd acid and amnesia drugs in the 1960s and they've refined over the last 60 years I'm going to have to this.